withstand the heat. Stay away from the fire. What's up, Prater Nation? I am the Commish, coming to you live, as always, from the friendly confines of Hardcore Challenge Live Studios. Deep behind the enemy line, this is your Raider Reaction, Week 17, 2019 season, post game. Postseason <laughs> reaction with yours truly. Where do we start? I know there was going to be a legion of fans that will go, It's the refs' fault! Blame it on the refs! Blame it on the refs! I know there's a legion of fans that are going to uh, say that, and uh, yeah. I can't blame this one on the refs. I can't blame this one on the refs. When you can only muster the, this was a shootout between Carr and and a kid who is just supposed to be finding his way, and a six-year NFL veteran getting paid one hundred twenty-five million dollars. I've seen enough. I've seen enough of fucking Captain Golly G that cannot elevate any kind of play around him. I've, I've seen enough. He is not a leader of men. At, at what point do, do you not get sick of watching the offense stumble around the field? The only reason he went over 300 yards this game... The only reason... He went over 300 yards this game. Is because a couple of his guys broke a couple of his dink and dunks for big plays. It's not because he went out there and was firing the ball 
all over. Uh, play calling my ass. You know how many times this game I've seen him look downfield for half a fucking second and then dump. Scan, dump. Scan, dump. I don't know how many times, and I'll go watch the coaches tape again like I do every fucking week. I watch guys run and open. He scans and dumps. Scans and dumps. Goes to a safety valve over and fucking over and over again. <sighs> Greatness overcomes. Okay? Greatness overcomes. You had the chance. You had what every, forget everything that happened the entire game. Forget it all. Forget everything. You were given what every quarterback in the world wants. What? What were you given? What every quarterback in the world wants. Give me one play with the ball in my hand and a chance to win the game. A legitimate chance to win the game. Give me the ball with a legitimate chance to win the game. He was given the ball with a legitimate chance to win the game. Against a below average shit ass team. And we couldn't get it done. Oh, come and tell me, oh, we've got a great defense. They're this, they're that, that. This is what Derek Carr does, and this is what he's done for six fucking seasons. He looks like shit against elite teams. He looks like shit against good teams. And then against average and below average and bad teams, he stays in the game, makes the fire drill at the end, and pulls out half of those. That's how you get 42% career win percentage, is you... You, you're a superhero sometimes when you're playing the Browns and the Bengals and the Jaguars and, you know, teams like that. But w when you play Kansas City twice a season and, and when you play the Broncos when they were good and, and you play the elite teams, you, you go and try and hang with the Texans. You couldn't even pull that one fucking out this season. Uh, you go play the Vikings as a playoff team in the fucking NFC and they kick your fucking teeth in. That's when you had healthy guys. So, listen, I, I'm sick of it. The, the fucking excuses. But he's the best we've had. Yeah, the best we've had. D don't go stick it. Go sh Listen, don't come fucking dancing in here with the... But he's the greatest statistical quarterback the Raiders have ever had. <laughs> Flush that shit. The only stat that matters to me. He's not even in the... fuck. You Don't even put his name next to Jay Schrader. Jay Schrader won playoff games and put this team in an AFC championship. When you even can fucking hold Jay Schrader's jock, then start mentioning your name in the breath of Jim Plunkett, who has an 8-2 and two playoff record. Okay? Don't even, because this motherfucker has yards in a, in a Madden era where the fucking rules are completely slanted in the favor of the offense, just because he's got great stance now, don't go putting him in the name of hollowed ground like he's the greatest quarterback in the history of the silver and black. He ain't even close, pal. He ain't even close. Todd Marinovich has at least lost a playoff game, okay? He even managed to lose a playoff game between doobies, and you can't even fucking get there to lose one. So don't even, I don't even want to hear, but, he's, but his percentage is great. Yeah, he throws for five yards. His percentage is great. We have nothing. Oh, come on, man. Ru Ryan Tannehill just put his fucking squad in the playoffs with what? With Hall of Fame wide receivers? With a Hall of Fame squad? Now get out of here, man. It's six seasons. I don't want to hear your fucking excuses anymore that he doesn't have this and he doesn't have that and he doesn't have this. No NFL quarterback gets a perfect bed to sleep in. Nobody. Nobody gets a perfect line with a Hall of Fame wide receivers with freaking, you know, a Hall of Fame tight end. They, they don't get the ghost. They don't get freaking, you know, a, a beast mode in his prime at running back. They, you, nobody gets all of that, man, with a, a Hall of Fame coaching staff and then this and then that. You got to do with what you got. You got to do the best with what you can, with what you got. And that's what greatness in sports does. It elevates itself. It elevates itself beyond, besides it elevates the self in spite of the adversity around it. That's what greatness does. It can elevate itself above adversity. Greatness overcomes, man. That's why we watch sports, to see greatness happen. <laughs> Not to see uh, uh, you, you take your team to 7-9 and nine by, by blowing it 
with the ball in your hand at the end of the season. In his hand. Okay? That wasn't on a wide receiver. That wasn't on anything else. He got that ball batted down. He got that ball batted down. I sit and watched an entire game Friday night with the, with the section of Raider Nation as we did Black Friday. And we played a classic game, the 500th game of Monday Night Football. It was uh, the Raiders in 2002 when they would went out and lost, won four, then lost four. And it was the bounce back game on the road in Monday Night Football against the Broncos. And I watched Rich Gannon in that game fight off sacks, uh, fight for first downs, throw sidearm around people, do everything in his power to keep drives alive, regardless of who the other players were around him. Him, personally, he did everything. And I challenge every one of you to go back, click on our video tab, and go watch that game. You watch the things that he did. And there's not half those fucking plays, you'll never see fucking Derek Carr fight out of the sacks like that. He'll curl up in a ball. He'll throw it into the ground. He doesn't have that kind of fire. He doesn't have that kind of fire. And I... If the only reason you're going to fucking keep your quarterback is I just don't see a better thing out there. I just don't see a better option. That's that, that's the reason for keeping a $125 million quarterback. But, but, but he's the best thing since Gannon. I just don't see another thing out there. Really? You need to look harder. You know, n nobody thought half these guys were anybody until you gave them a shot. There's a whole squad of, uh, of new recruits coming out of the college ranks. You got to stick some. If you're not getting rid of him, then you've got to stick somebody on this roster who challenges him. Because he's not the guy. He's not the guy. You've got to, you've got to take a chance and find greatness. This show... We've all seen this over and over. We've got a whole off season now to discuss who we think the quarterback's going to be. Because you need to bring somebody in-house. You've got to bring somebody in-house to challenge this guy and put some fire behind him, man. You, you've, got, you've got to put some... Somebody's got to challenge this guy for his job. But I've seen enough. Your defense gave you every opportunity to win this game. Every single opportunity. Every single opportunity. And you went down the field and we couldn't finish and we couldn't finish and we couldn't finish. He's a good quarterback. But he's not a leader of men. And it's, it's, it, I think it's time to move on. And I think it's time to bring fresh blood onto this team. This is a young squad. I think you gamble on one of these dynamic young quarterbacks that are coming out in the draft. I honestly think that that is where... We need to go. It's either that or you do two things. You bring in a veteran for one season, a veteran free agent, quarterback, and bring in a rookie as well. But something needs to be done. And like I said, we've got a whole offseason to talk about that. But Raider Nation, ah, there's some things to be excited about this season. We found some new young talent. But we pissed away a gigantic opportunity. You are sitting six and four with six games left ahead of you, coming out of one of the worst road stretches in the history of the NFL. And five out of six of those games had losing records. The season was a failure. Teams rebuild in one or two years. Teams across the NFL do it all the time. It doesn't take three, four years. To rebuild your squad not not in the not in this day and age of the, not the way the draft is built not the way free agency is built he's a veteran that has no fire he's a veteran that has no stones Derek Carr was neutered seasons ago and if you haven't can't see it I'm sorry he's a nice guy and we all I think I think everybody kept just waiting for him to, to, for that greatness to blossom. But you know what? Greatness doesn't take six seasons to come to fruition. It just doesn't. 
Greatness doesn't take that long to grow and cultivate. And, oh, oh, he's gonna get there. He just needs this. He just needs this. He just needs this. One more ingredient. One more thing. Just this. He just needs this. Well, if we just give him this, but if we just give him that, and this, and this, oh, if he just needs a new offensive coordinator, he needs a better line. He needs, he needs better wide receivers. He needs a better tight end. He needs a better running back behind him. He needs this. Oh, he hasn't been in the system long enough. Blah, 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 blah. It's six seasons, man. What are you gonna be saying at the end of 2020? When he pissed away another season? You gonna be saying the same fucking thing? You gonna be doing the same song and dance? Or you gonna take your head out of the motherfucking sand and realize our car, as much as we paid for it, ain't nothing special. It don't run worth a fuck in the cold. It has no towing power. It stays in the garage January through August. We're paying for a Ferrari that runs like a Kia. I think it's time to trade the car. It's time to sell the car. It's an end. Pathetic. Pathetic end to a season that had the possibility of getting us into the postseason. We, there's no reason we should have failed. All the teams that we were fighting with failed and fell around us. And at 8-8, eight and eight, we could have walked in. At 9-7, and seven, we were in the playoffs as a lock. And we couldn't handle our own business. It's our fucking fault. We should hang our heads in fucking shame. You embarrassed the fucking franchise again. When the fuck does commitment to excellence start to be something besides a fucking bumper sticker? When does pride and poise start to be something besides a fucking bumper sticker and something cool on a t-shirt? When's it going to start to mean something for these motherfuckers? When do we start to get the love back from the field that us as a fan base gives the field? Because the only way we can get that love back is by wins. Giving us what you're fucking paid to do. Do your fucking job. You got a lot of work to do this off season. We got a lot to talk about. That's a wrap for me for this season. See you on the flip side with Big L. I'm out. Peace, love. Raider Nation!